Welcome to the Expert Speaker Podcast. We have the legend himself, Steve D. Sims. Welcome. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Steve, the first time I saw you, I knew that there was, uh, you had this aura about you. Everyone's like, it's Steve Sims. It's Steve Sims. And people start bringing whiskey bottles to you. Yeah. I'm like, who is this guy? That's the whiskey bottle magnet. <laughs> we met in 2016 at the Archangel Conference. And you've done nothing but crack jokes every time I see you. And uh, I can't wait to just unpack and uncover the secret to your success as a speaker. Wow. Um, I think the first, the first secret that's not really a secret is in certain aspects, don't try to be, don't try too hard. You see, you're, you're a speaking coach and you're a very successful speaking coach. And you can, you can add testament to the fact that speakers or the requirement and necessity of speakers has changed over the years. You know, if we go back to the, the 80s and 90s and the early 2000s, you got a keynote, he went up, he did his bit, then he left, and that was it, job done. Getting on stage now is so much more than the foot time that you're actually up on that stage. It is meeting the crowd. It is interacting with the crowd. It is quite simply showing up as you, like Gary V. Very well shows up as him, me. If you meet me in the bar the night before, you see me on stage, I'm the exact same person. Today, people can smell it when you try to be someone you're not. Let's dive into that, Steve. I certainly have fallen victim to the belief at some point that uh, the real me is not good enough. But if I construct some sort of persona, maybe that will be the one that can get speaking engagements and get people to like them. How do you be your genuine self when you have some belief that your genuine self is not good enough to be the one on stage? Wow. Therapy hour. I think yeah. the biggest problem people have today is they, they do that. And they try to be the person that you will want to do more business with. Yeah. Now, that's a dangerous calculation. I've got to change the way I look, the way I sound in order for it to relate better to you, this fake authenticity to get you to relate to me, to want to do business with the shell or persona that I've created. Wow. That doesn't make sense to me, and I'm saying it. So I think today what I <laughs> what I try to do is I try, and you again, you can you, you can agree and confirm this. There are people, and this is a shock, but there are people in the world that really don't like me. Mm. I know, I know, I know. It's a shock to believe, but there are. And here's the thing: today there is a species of humanity that you've created. There are those people in the room that are going to hate you. There are stages that are going to hate you. There are people that are going to hate you. That's fine. They've made that decision. Move along. There are people that love you. No matter what you say, you can read a phone book. They just love you. Great. You've already got their engagement. But do you have the fence sitters? Do you have those people that are sitting there going, I don't know about this guy. I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't know who he's trying to be. You know, I'm really not sure about him. And when you're confused, you get suspicious. And when you're suspicious, you'll never get out your checkbook. So the point is, you've got to be so clearly defined as you to allow people one of two choices. Love you, hate you. But no one will ever be on the fence. Today, when I'm speaking with crowds, and we did it at the beginning of this conversation. As a speaker, the first thing you want to know, the only thing you want to know is the fit. It doesn't matter. And I, I have turned down, and I charge 25 to 50 grand a speech. I have turned down gigs many times this year because there's been an explosion, as you know, of live gigs this year because a lot of gigs you know, didn't happen. I've turned gigs down for this year in 2023 because I wasn't a fit for the audience. And it doesn't matter if you pay me 40 grand to turn up and, and speak on stage with a community that I have absolutely no relatability to because you're only going to damage your own brand, okay? So the first thing you've got to do is 
Who's the people I'm speaking with? What's the message I can give them? How can I make them smarter as they leave the room than when they entered into it, purely and simply by me being on stage? And then you've got to ask yourself, can I show up as me? Don't worry about being authentic. Don't worry about being good enough. If what you can do can solve my problem, I don't give a shit what you look like, how you look. I'm not trying to date you. I'm trying to learn from you. And that's what you've got to focus on. Is your message strong enough to impact and benefit someone in the audience? And if it is, you should no longer be nervous. You should now be obligated to share that information. Beautiful. Recap. So only speak where you're a fit. Only speak where you can add value. Even if they're offering you lots of money, don't do it if you're not a fit. And then only do it where you can show up as your authentic self. Yep. Okay. It's not hard. And that, that, you know, that's the, that's the biggest thing that makes me giggle. The first thing you've got to do is get rid of all of the shit that you've spent the last months creating, thinking that you now look this wonderful person when you're only ever going to show up as a fake, a very smart person, if they call themselves a genius, ends up becoming a fraud. So what you want to do is you just want to focus on being you and just focus on the bare minimum primitive impact. Can I solve your problem? If not, don't go on that stage. What are some of the questions that you ask an event organizer to determine if you can solve their problems? Absolutely. The same questions every single time. And my last gig I got was for Dallas, Texas, and I got it on Friday. And it was the same thing. They will always come at you and go, hey, we're interested in you speaking at our event. What is your rate? And I always go, well, I'm 25 to 50 grand. Again, because we're friends, I'll give you the answer. You always get kind of in the middle of that. You yeah. know, I've yeah. never got the full 50. Um, and we're talking about event before expenses. And again, we can go into pricing and all that kind of diff thing at a different time. But they always want to get over the sticker shock. You know, what's your price? Well, I'm 25 to 50 grand. First tip. First important tip coming now. Here it comes. Give a range. Okay. Never give a price. Okay. Give a range. I'm 25 to 50, but... In order for me to be able to give you an exact quote, I need to know a lot more about the event, my time, my interaction, my commitment. So let's work through that. I had a guy that said to me the other day, and he's an up and coming speaker. He's really good, but he's trying to get more experience on stage. So he charges five grand. And I've said to him, that's fantastic. Charge four to eight. And he's like, but I only want five grand. Charge four to eight. Do a range, you know, and he's gone, no, 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 I've got this. He got a gig for five grand. Turned out it was a two-day training session that he had done for five grand. Yeah. So give yourself a range so you can go, well, actually, this is what I charge for 30 minutes. But if you want me to do an afternoon, then we need, and so the range will help you on that. So the first thing you do is you give a range and then you say in order. For me to be able to give you the best rate, I need to ask, who are the people that are here? And we did this at the beginning of this conversation. Who yeah. are the people that are turning up? What is their problem? Another good question to ask is, are they a member of the company or have they paid to be there? Why Some is that an important question? Massive. If you've got a, a, you know, a summit, a company summit, and the people are using it as an excuse to go and play in Tahoe for the weekend. They're not as committed as someone that spent one to five grand to actually be at the event. Okay. So it's a different mindset, also a different way that you'll talk to them. Yeah. So you want to know who's going to be there. Basically, are they comped or did they pay to be there? What's the problem that they have at the moment? And importantly, in looking at me and coming to me or accepting my communication with you to have this conversation just in your quick overview of steve sims what solution did you hope i was going to bring to your stage and to your people and start to get into that conversation so very early on into the conversation ask them what is the problem you are looking at me to be the solution for and what are some of the answers you would get to that question 
which, you know, to be honest with you, it's usually the same. It's the usual suspects, you know. Oh, uh, we, we want to know how to get past the gatekeeper. Oh, uh, we want to know how to get affluent clients. Um, we want to get more sales by doing less. We want to learn how to time manage. How do you build up communication? How do you expand your brand on the internet? How do you take your persona from meeting you in a bar to, you know, TikTok and, and social? How do you expand the real you? And the one that really always annoys me is, how do we become authentic? That's and kind I of the question I started. That was one of the questions I started with you just now. Fucking tickles me pink. It's like me asking you, oh, how do I breathe? How do I walk? You actually have to go out of your way to cover who you are. You have to uh, pretend yeah. to be so. You've never been anyone other than you. That's what I've always loved and respected about you. You, know, you are you. Stage, bar, conference, summit, TikTok live. You're you. Yeah. And that's what I've always liked. I'm amazed how many people actually go out of their way to cover themselves. So if you want to be authentic, stop trying. Talk to me about some of the things you do on stage, off stage, that leads to more speaking engagements, repeat business, more sales, back end sales. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the first thing I do is I get a lot of speaking gigs come to me. I'm a great believer that we surf the wave that we create. So I get a lot of gigs come to me, but they didn't always. So let's start at the beginning bit. Yeah. The good thing about me and you is that we're just about to be unemployed when we walk off the stage. That's right. Unless it's our event, we're not being invited back to keynote the following year. You know, because they'll get someone else. So if you think that you are very relatable to me, Gary V, anyone else, okay, pick the five people that are very similar to you and follow them. And every time they're on a speaking gig, reach out to that gig and go, hey, I saw you had Majid there. Well done. Congratulations. He's absolutely brilliant. Oh, I saw you had Giovanni there. Joe Polish. Oh, congratulations. Get on that radar because I guarantee you next year, those people won't be back. So there's an empty spot. That's the first thing, right? And then the other thing that I said to you earlier was, is it a company event or is it a paid event? Now, if it's a company event, you may get district managers in that event. District managers hold district events, okay? So if you know that, again, know your room. It's the most important thing in the, in, the, in the philosophy of speaking. Know your audience. If your audience is made up of top salespeople and district managers, then while you're talking, you can turn around and go, look, I'm, I'm very thrilled to be speaking to 5,000 of you here. Usually I just do district events and, you know, where we can hone in on this. But, hey, I'm going to give you a broad view. Sow the seed in the district manager's mind and then quite often after that, they'll reach out to you and go, oh, I saw, I heard you did district events. We got 12. I did a mortgage convention uh, for a company based in Palm Beach, uh, not Palm Beach, Palm Springs. And they're actually based all over the US. And out of that one gig, I got, I think it was like 16 other district events around America that's taking me into 2023. So that was really good there. But then you've also got other people. And like you, here's a perfect example. Giovanni, Archangel Academy. It's his event, but I know you do events. And here we are. So when you go onto that stage, if you know the people in the room are serial entrepreneurs and quite openly influencers of their own tribe, you know full well that they throw their own events. So when you're out there, you speak to them. You say, hey, I'm really proud to be here. I, I travel around a lot of entrepreneurial events. I've been very blessed to be able to speak on some phenomenal stages from, from Hawaii to uh, Honduras to Thailand to, you know, Los Angeles. Really thrilled. To start sowing the seeds because those people will reach out to you. But here's a key. They'll only reach out to you if you give them a way to reach out to you. Now, I am stunned. Here's another big tip. Big tip number two, and Majid actually fell into it a bit earlier. He said to me, what's your TikTok handle? And you can remember my sarcasm on that. I said, what do you think? My TikTok handle 
is Steve D. Sims. And I'm not pitching you on anything because you're obviously watching this on live, so you already bloody know that. But okay. guess what my Facebook handle is? Guess what my website is? Guess what I am on LinkedIn? The exact same link, Steve D. Sims. So I'm able to go on stage, and I saw this a little while ago from this very professional person who was a speaker coach. Not as good as me and you, G, but, you know, not too bad. And at the end of that presentation, which was actually very good, I was watching it. And, you know, when we're used to being on stage, we were a little bit more critical of other people on stage. But this person really carried themselves. And at the end of it, and they said, hey, if you want to get hold of me, on TikTok, I'm da-da-da-da, underscore one, two, three. On Facebook, I'm one, two, three, hyphen. And there were five different handles. And I was like, what the... No one's writing them down. And so when I end, I turn, I'm i able to turn around every single time and say, hey, if you want to get hold of me, I'm Steve D. Sims, D for dashing, only one M in Sims, everywhere you consume your media. Test it. And that's it. That's how I end. I make it easy for you to get hold of me. Great. So in reverse order, recap. Be consistent with your social media handles and make it easy to reach you. When you're speaking to a room full of people with events, drop little seeds of, I speak at other people's events, hint, hint, if you want me to speak at your event, you should reach out to me. And lastly, uh, you started with when you're speaking at an event where you've got like managers who have districts that they manage, and you've got basically a bunch of people who are like, this guy's good. We, we should have him speak at our other events. You can turn one speech into 16 speeches. Well done. Now There is uh, actually I, another way to get paid on top of that. Yeah, Do you want ahead. that one? Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Whenever we go to a big event, there's sponsors at it, and they've all got their booths outside, haven't they? How many people end up talking to those people? Hmm. So what I do is I actually go to every single one of these booths truthfully, and I go, hey, guys, you know, I, I'm not interested in your, your hair products, but I wanted to say thank you for sponsoring this event because let's be blunt, I'm one of the keynote speakers at this event, and if it wasn't for early sponsors, this event wouldn't get off the ground because we know that they need your money to get it going. Yeah. Just want to say thank you. Yeah. The amount of times people have gone, that's absolutely fantastic. Now, here's the thing. If you run an event, and let's pick on the hairdressers for a second, because I use that joke. If you go to a convention and you're a hairdresser that puts on conventions and you go to a hairdressing convention and has, it has hairdressing sponsors, how many of you go to them to pitch them to sponsor your event? All right. It's open duck season. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. amount of times, and this is the first question, the sponsors always ask, all right, you know, how much are you looking for? Where is it? Who's speaking? A third of my gigs have come from sponsors going, Steve Sims, is he speaking at your event? And they've gone, oh, no, no, he's, he, I haven't, we haven't spoken with him yet. And they're like, you need to speak to that guy because I show that I care about the sponsors. And then every now and then I'll turn around and go, hey, guys, do you want me to stand at your stand for, you know, do you want me to come off the stage and stand at your stand for 10 minutes? And they're like, yeah, would you do that? Fine. You've already been paid and you'll get a second gig from that sponsor. Okay. Wow. I've done cocktail receptions. I've done dinners. I've done breakfast. That's a way of actually getting extra monies. And it really works. Steve Sims, I got to say you're smarter than you look. I had to be really, didn't I? <laughs> Very good. Okay. I'd like to get into a little bit of the nuance of the sales process. When a speaking opportunity reaches out to you mm -hmm. and they say, hey, we want you to speak. What's your fee? You shared a little bit about that. And if you would want to go into like how you do your contract and how you collect your payment, if there's anything that you've learned along the way that would be helpful to this audience and then compare that. So that's, we'll call that an inbound speaking request. They're asking okay. you. Compare that to an outbound speaking request. If you ever do that, say, for example, you hear about a conference and you go, okay, I don't know anybody there, but I want to speak at that conference. 
do you have a process like, okay, I'm going to reach out, I'm going to call them, I'm going to say, you never heard of me, but I want to speak at your conference. And do you have a strategy for, for that outbound as well? Yeah. So great questions. And there's a lot of people out there that it almost becomes arrogance and they turn around and they go, oh, I never chase for stages. You know, why not? You know, there's some fantastic stages out there. I chase all the time. I would say that a good 50 to 60%, yeah, probably 60% of my speaking gigs come from people that have seen me, sponsors from the example I gave you earlier, but the rest of it is from me chasing, okay? So let's work on the first bit. Um, I always give the range. I've told you that before. For, For a start, let's even go more micro than that. If you don't have a speaker page, then you're not a speaker, okay? If you don't have the word speaker in your bios, in your social handles, you're not a speaker. No one wants to pay for a speaker who is just a side gig, okay? So show it that you are professional. So first of all, get all of your your social bios open, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, your Tinder, whatever. Get them all open. And look at the bio. And if the bio in there says speaker, great. If it doesn't, add it, okay? So the first thing to do is put speaker in there. The next thing you need to do is a very simple and short speaker page. Now, I have copied mine from many, many, many different people. So I haven't invented the wheel. I've just put my paint job on it. If you go to stevedsims.com, click on speaker, that page is similar to probably about 50 million other people's. Why? Because that's how the the industry watches the speakers. They've become, it's like you walk into a restaurant and you ask for a menu. What if the restaurant turns around and goes, we don't have menus? You've been taught that you walk into a restaurant and you get a menu. If they don't have a menu, this can't be a real restaurant. You're not going there again. So make sure you've got a speaker page. Take a look at mine and then re-engineer it with your name on it. Okay? So that when you do speak to people, they can go to the gods of Google. They can find your page and see you take it seriously. Okay? Very important point there. So when you've got an inbound coming in, Again, make sure that you've got all of this backup information to show how professional and how good you are. Ask for the range, ask for the things, and then you go, okay, great. Based on the conversation we've had, I really do. And this is a good thing. There's two things here. You can turn around and go, do you know, I know what your people are looking for because I did that three times back then. Here's the key. And let me, I I was going to pick up my phone and I can't do that because I'm talking to you on it. Uh, Every event I do, every event I do, I say to them, hey, can you get me a flyer? And you've seen these on my social pages. Can you get me a flyer? And they go, oh, you're going to be on the website. And I say, that's great. But if you get me a flyer, I can share it with my community that I'm at your event. Would that help you? You've now become not only a speaker, you become part of our marketing strategy. That's a great point. All right? Well, it's a selfish point because now you've got all of these flyers from all of these events you've done. And if you're speaking to a real estate convention, send them four flyers and go, actually, I've spoken about the exact same thing at countless events. These were some of my most recent ones. Good one. So now you've got the backup from those flyers. I was doing, I'm doing traffic and conversion. And they're like, well, we don't do flyers. I'm like, I need to have a flyer so I can tell. And they're like, well, we're nearly sold out. But if you get me a flyer, so they want to help you help them. Yeah. But also every speaking gig will watch how you've actually treated the last speaking gig you were at. Yes. So one of the common things I get from anyone that reaches out to me is we love the way you get involved in promoting an event. And then I can say to them, well, that's because I don't accept 
every event that comes to me. So you're now breeding that exclusivity thing and that yeah. kind of like takeaway. I may not accept you. Okay. Yeah. And then you go, but when I do, I'm in with both feet. Okay. So they love that. They love that part. Okay. Now I'll always say to them, okay, great. We're going to do this. I'll get you over the basic requirements. I'm just going to keep it simple and easy. And I will send them from me an email. I will CC my assistant and I will say, hey, thanks a lot for the conversation this morning. I would be thrilled to be the keynote at your event. Always use the word keynote. Why? Because keynotes get paid more than the fluffers. All right? Keynote, keynote. Key you look at my social and I'm always, hey, I'm thrilled to be a keynote here. Oh, I'm proud to be a keynote here. I'm always keynote. Okay. So you say, hey, I'd be thrilled to be the keynote at your event. Just want to go over, based on our conversation, we spoke about the range of my speaking fee that you would want me for 45 minutes. You would like me to turn up at the VIP reception the night after. Um, you'll be happy to send me the assets I require so that I can market the event myself through all of my social feeds. And uh, I will require a suitable hotel transfers to and from the hotel a lot of people forget the transfers between the hotel they, they can end up being 300 bucks um and suitable business class flights based on all of this and removing the travel and expenses i agree to the rate of and then the rate can say something like you know if you're doing a 25 to 50 you can turn around and go 35 40 42 and a half you can give the range again i've never never gone up to the full rate okay yeah. Yeah. so i've not only said that i'm exclusive and i may not accept your event i've also said to him that i'm not even going to charge you the full rate because i'm really excited about being in your event yeah all right so there's, that's the way you do it there and then at the bottom of it you say how i proceed i take 50 percent on agreement and 50% 30 days prior to the event. Okay. I always charge 100% before I'm on that stage. Now, there have been some really large gigs that I've done where they've gone, no, we actually pay seven, uh, they pay, they always pay 50% up front, always, yeah. Yeah. because I'm not going to allow you to use my face unless you do. But there's been a few events, and when I say a few, I think this year maybe two, um, that have said we pay seven days after the event. Got it. So, and, and I'll, I'll allow that. Okay. Um, so, Steve Sims, you're known in many circles as the real life Wizard of Oz. <laughs> you gave some great um, lessons in your book, Blue Fishing, things like how you got Andre Bocelli to serenade a private client and how you've got Elton John to help your clients and hang out with your clients and you you've pulled off some pretty amazing things and you have another book coming out go for I stupid do. and i don't know any there it is tell me about it what is it i was actually when i did my first book blue fishing it told stories of me and elon musk and every kind of name drop you can think about and how i did how a bricklayer from london ended up working in the most affluent society in the planet i didn't expect the book to be anything and it really took off as you know it threw me out into the public eye and i ended up speaking and training and coaching but i was amazed that it wasn't just so much about people's ability to do something it was their determination not to how many people turn around and go hey i would love to do that oh but i can't oh my god i'm so i i'm a bit nervous i don't know how john my god i can't even play People spend so much time on talking themselves out of something rather than focusing on the one reason that they should. And I was with Elon Musk in SpaceX and someone was, uh, one of my clients was saying to him about how did you survive mentally from the fact that NASA used to attack you so much and now they're your partner. And he literally turned around and he said, people always laugh at you just before they applaud. Mm. And I thought to myself, shit, that's right. And I realized that everything I had ever done, like you mentioned about the Pacelli experience, I had a client that wanted a dinner. I literally, in Florence, 
the first thing, the way that I work is, okay, what is the most stupid idea I can come up with? And I'll work back from there. You know the old saying, if you want to make $5 million, go for 10 and fail at seven and a half. You know, it's that kind of, you know, push yourself and don't ever be scared of people laughing at you. So in which case I wrote the book, Go For Stupid. It brings up examples of my life where I've just not cared about people laughing, but I've gone for ridiculous goals. And then I've gone into it with other people that I've known from Peter Diamandis, Elton John, Elon Musk's in there, a whole bunch of other people that have actually said, look, if they're not laughing at you, then your goal's not big enough. So you want to speak on a thousand stages. If people around you are laughing at you, then that's the right goal. That's the goal you need to go for, you know? And you've also got to realize that people laugh at you because they don't want you to achieve anything that you're going for and then validate how they're inadequate to do so. Mm, mm, that's a good comes out Comes out on 18th of October. Uh, how can we support you in the launch? Well, I'm going to obviously put it out on all of my socials. So anyone that wants to follow me, you know the score. You know where I am, Steve D. Sims. On the 18th, I'm going to blitz it out that it's now available. Um, if you really want to set yourself up to go for more stupid goals and then risk achieving them, grab the book, tell people about the book. But more impo importantly, be willing to be laughed at. Now, you said right at the beginning of this how you felt you had the solution how you were concerned about yourself. And there was a, these nerves about being on stage. And we've all been there. I was, when I started getting the gigs that I was getting, I was like, hang on, I'm on Stanford. I'm on Harvard, you know, MDRP. I'm on all these massive stages with Damon John, you know, Jay Abraham, all of these people. And it's me. And then I realized it's not me. It's my solution that, that's up there. The only reason I'm up there is not because I'm stunningly good looking. That's just a perk. But I'm there to help other people become smarter. And that's the thing. I want people to be willing to be laughed at. I don't care if you buy the book, but risk being laughed at. Love that. Um, Steve, how has having a book changed your approach to speaking? Um, it hasn't changed my approach to speaking, but it's changed my credibility to speak. You know, the classic, if you want to be an authority, you have to be an author. That's a classic that's been around for years. I didn't, I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware how important the book was, but also the speaker page that I talked to you about earlier. Yeah. You see, you're going to meet someone at an event and you're going to convince them over the bar that you are the best speaker since Michael Jordan. And you're going to convince them. And then what are they going to do as they head for that hotel room? They're going to check out whether you're full of shit by the Google gods on their phone. So the question is, how do you show up on a five-inch screen? And that's one of the things people forget about. They will do a website. It'll look brilliant, but it's not mobily friendly. Right. And so they've got this beautiful website. I spoke to a client, very successful speaker the other day, and I said about we've got to build up your speaker page, and this, this thing has to be short. She basically put on a complete press pack, you know, and it was like 10 pages. And I said, okay, pick up your phone, start reading it. And she's doing this. And oh my God, your arthritis is starting to get into her forearm and the blood's starting to leave out of her finger. And she's only just got past the title. I said, it's too long. You've got to imagine that anyone that ever hears about you is going to check you out while they're waiting in line at Starbucks for that coffee. How do you show up on a five-inch screen? That's the thing you've got to be focusing on. So having a good speaker page, having a book, all of these things are quick reference points that validate that prior decision that you are someone. Because bear in mind, if you're searching someone, the back of your mind subconsciously has already said, I like this person. Yeah. You know, I'm intrigued in this person. I'm yeah. so intrigued that I'm going to create an action to learn more and validate that they are the wonderful heartthrob that I think they are. Yeah. So you've already won. It's now you that's fucking up that end bit. Hmm. Okay, Steve, last question. Okay. 
Um, what's the one question I haven't asked you that I should have? <laughs> why people give me whiskey and why they shouldn't. <laughs> this, the, the weird thing is, I like an old fashioned, okay? I do like a good whiskey oh. cocktail. But here's the dumb thing. I think this month, and this month's been quite stressful, um, you know, what with everything being planned for the book launch and everything and travel and speaking gigs, I think maybe this month I've maybe had three old fashions. Uh -oh. So I'm not, a, I'm not a serial alcoholic. But here's <laughs> the thing. Quite often, I'll just be like, hey, cheers. And it's the same picture I'll use, but it'll be with me with a whiskey going, hey, I approve this message. And in my pictures, I would have a glass of whiskey. And I remember on LinkedIn, someone said, your profile picture has a glass of you, uh, you with a glass of whiskey. It's LinkedIn. And I, I couldn't find the rule book that said that I shouldn't have a profile picture with an old fashioned. So yeah. I left it there. You'd be amazed how many people it actually aggravates that I've got alcohol on LinkedIn. Okay. Mm. Now, of course, it never aggravates anyone that would actually ever do any business with me. It only ever aggravates the pricks that have got nothing better to do than just kind of like moan about you. So this reputation that I was a whiskey uh, alcoholic kind of grew. Sure. And I must have two cabinets. And I'm not joking. Two cabinets full of whiskey. And if I ever go to a party, my boy went to a party two days ago and I went, Go and grab some, and he just goes into the can, just grabs out whiskey. So, yeah. you know, I don't for, for the for the health of my kidneys, don't send me whiskey. But uh, thank you very much for thinking of me. That's funny because that was one of the first things I said about you. I was like, all right, we're going to introduce Steve Sims. Who's this guy? Everyone's bringing a bottle of whiskey. Yeah, to. exactly. And that's what would happen. And every gig that I go to, I get whiskey. Every single gig is hysterical. Goodness. All right. Great. All right. Well, he's Steve D. Sims on all of the social platforms. Check out his speaker page for inspiration on his website. Buy his book when it goes live on October 18th. Steve, thank you for giving all the goodies. You are full of wisdom. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Cheers, pal. Now they've got the wisdom. Now they need to do something with it. Thank you for listening to the Expert Speaker Podcast. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and leave us a rating so that more people can discover the Expert Speaker Podcast and so more people can be empowered to share their message. Be sure to go to www.expertspeaker.com and take a masterclass to learn how to grow your business and make money speaking. It's totally free and will change your business. If you're ready to work with Expert Speaker, you can apply. Just go to expertspeaker.com slash apply and someone from our team will be in touch with you to help you grow your business with public speaking. That's expertspeaker.com slash apply. We'll see you in the next episode.